Hey viewers, my name's Kara. I'm your host for Tuesdays on the Pagan Perspective, and this week we're talking about organizing paganism just a little bit. The topic this week comes from a viewer who wished to remain anonymous, and their question reads, what are your thoughts about making paganism and pagan religions more organized? Do you think it adds too much structure, or does it make us capable of achieving better things in social areas and gives us a more firm definition in the eyes of the rest of the world? Okay, first things first, for those of you who look worried, a religion or a practice that has some organization is not the same as an organized religion. Organized religion, when you look up the definition, is also called institutional religion and refers to religions that are formally structured and outlined by a social institution. And everyone within that religion is able to, or required to, follow that outline. It makes it so that even across the country, for example, in hundreds of different individual groups, all people following the same religion are still doing things pretty much the same and have a large set of beliefs and practices in common. Paganism is not that. And Organizing it a bit, that is, coordinating or coming up with certain outlines to follow or scheduling or creating group practices, is not going to turn it into an institutionalized religion where we all operate under the same singular authority. Pagan paths do have some structure and organization already, though a lot of people think of them simply as not organized religion. But that doesn't mean they have no organization at all. Different branches of paganism and neo-paganism and witchcraft do have things in common. There's a kind of structure in the basic beliefs of each group that binds them together. So that across the country and across the world, certain core beliefs are upheld by followers of the same path. But individual and group differences will always exist, and that's something that we like as pagans. For example, if you look up a Wiccan ritual format, and a Druid ritual format, and a Norse ritual format, you will find basic outlines for what each of those paths usually does, and the style their rituals have. You will see that they differ from one another in certain ways, but may have similarities as well. Then if you attend ritual with multiple groups from any one of those paths, you'll see a basic structure that's similar due to their being part of the same path, but you will also find the differences that each group themselves decided upon. They might change things from ritual to ritual, but still have a basic outline to go from that are things they believe should always be part of ritual. At my UU church, there is a basic structure to our services with elements that are always included. These are things that all UU churches have, but each church does them differently. Beyond that, changes can be made to the structure of an individual service, or the service can be reorganized so that this happens after this instead of before, and things like that, without making it a completely non-UU service. It's good to have some level of organization like that in my church because People are familiar with it and know basically what to expect. We'll light the chalice, we'll have silence and lighting of candles, we'll sing, we'll hear readings, we'll listen to music, there will be a sermon homily or reflection, and we'll extinguish the chalice at the end. Within that structure, anything can happen. I recently led a service at my UU church that was a blend of my own church's usual structure and a basic neo-pagan ritual format. There were enough similarities to fit them together. But of course, changes were made to make sure it was still a UU worship service, and things were reorganized to make it fit my vision while touching on the church's outline. The call to worship was a chant, the songs and readings were pagan, and we did an invocation in the form of a responsive reading. Things like that. But religions are more than just ritual, so let me just say that pagan groups can absolutely benefit from having a little organization. No, this does not put us in danger of becoming an organized religion. I mean things like having a regular schedule for meetings so people know when to show up and can plan ahead. Having things start on time. Pagan standard time is a joke that we all laugh at, but it isn't something to expect to be true in a setting where you're actually trying to accomplish things together. Communicating well and responding to others' communication. Having certain responsibilities within group leadership. Things like that help you stay organized and productive. These are good things. Even if you're a solitary, as I am for the most part, you probably have some kind of organization. There's probably something you like to do first, and second, and third, and something you do last of all. Maybe you change that order sometimes, but you have signposts of things that you tend to do. 
you may have a certain way that you like to set up your personal space. And again, that can change regularly and still have an organization and a structure. These words do not mean unchangeable, immovable, or permanent. Some people's paths are naturally less structured than others, which is to be expected. I'm not saying you all have a very specific and hard structure to your paths. Far from it. I'm sure some of you do have that, but many probably don't. I'm just trying to give examples of how even religions that are not institutionally organized with a central governing unit that determines belief and practice can have some organization to them and how that can help. As for giving us a firmer definition in the eyes of the world, yes, to an extent, I think that does play a role. The Higginbotham's book, Paganism, for example, which I've talked about on my personal channel, is a book that discusses a small number of things that they, through their research, found to be pretty universal amongst all people who identify as pagan, even if they were different types of pagan. I think knowing things like that is immensely helpful, not just in the way of other people being able to have a better idea of who we are exactly, but also for us to see that even across the board with very little in common as far as exact beliefs and practices go, we still have a core thread of paganness in us that brings us together. Not everyone identifies as pagan, and some of those things that we consider essentially pagan may be shared by people in non-pagan paths as well. This is all part of how we are not an organized religion and never will be, but thinking in terms of what we do have in common is very important amongst ourselves and our community, as well as between religious communities. And having a little organization helps us as individuals and as groups, and may also help those who are interested in beginning a pagan path know where to begin and how to join in. Seeing an outline helps us determine what is the same, what is different, which do I like, which do I not like, what would I change for myself, and what would I keep? So basically, yeah, I think a little organization is helpful. Too much overarching organization of the institutional variety is not something paganism is interested in. There is a middle ground here. We already have a bit of it, and in some cases could use a little more. Just don't go overboard. Okie dokie. And speaking of a little format and framework, The Pagan Perspective is about to turn six years old. This upcoming weekend will be our sixth anniversary and the start of our seventh year. We have been trying to add some new elements here and there and change up a few things to keep it interesting, but without a little bit of organization and a lot of support from you, we never could have made it this far. The next two weeks will be subs weeks, giving them a little extra time at the anniversary, and I'll see you here again in September. Until then, I'll be around my personal channel, CuteWitch772. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to be awesome. Blessed be and goodbye.